Crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with 10 cards, one kit for the Hero Arts August 2017 card kit. Now I'm recording this at the end of November, Cyber Monday in fact, and kind of trying to distract myself from all those online sales of things I don't need but are really cute. And um, anyway, so obviously this video is kind of late, but here I am uh, sharing it anyway in case there's some of you who haven't worked on the kit yet and would like some ideas or inspiration or have pieces of the kit. Um, and many of these will still be applicable because I used a lot of the reusable things. That's what's pretty cool about Hero Arts kits. Um, they tend to include things that you can use over and over, the dies or the stencils, things like that. Um, the of course, stamp sets can be used many, many times. There's not a lot of like product that you use up. So if you really like it, you can get a lot out of it. So I'm just showing you the kit contents, the stamp set, quite large six by eight stamp set. I decided to keep the backer piece of paper there because it's really pretty and I thought I could cut it up to use on a card. I kind of liked the backside as well. However, on the back side, when they put the dies down, they use an adhesive that's a lot harder to get up. It doesn't, like the stamp adhesive just kind of rolls off. It's like a removable glue dot. But what they use to hold down the dies is a much stronger adhesive. So like I tried rubbing it off and you can see it's like shaking my whole desk. So my camera's moving there. But it just doesn't come off as well. So you kind of have to strategically cover it or not use it or, you know, cut around it. Anyway, I'm going to start off with that because that to me was the most obvious thing about the kit like I knew oh I want to use that pretty paper uh, I wasn't quite sure what my other ideas were and I kind of thought well let me kind of get the juices flowing by making what I would consider an easy card in the sense that I had an, an immediate idea for it so here I am trying to cut around that little bit of adhesive try to make sure that I get as little of it as possible on the card I'm going to make one card with each side of the backer sheet. There's not really pattern paper here. And I, one of the reasons this kit video took so long to share is because this kit took me a long time to use. And not like in the I was busy sort of way, but in the I don't know what to do with this kit sort of way. And because I got really frustrated at one point with this kit and the supplies. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later. But for these two cards, I'm going to keep it simple, kind of just make two quick cards. I decided to use the um, sentiment that says, let your light shine. I thought that would be a good sentiment for donating cards, like you know, just a really positive, encouraging sentiment. And I also decided to use the blue ribbon that the card kit came wrapped in. As you can see, I'm a big fan of using everything that's there, especially if it's pretty or I enjoy it. So I'm going to use what is also sort of disposable about the kit, the ribbon. The ribbon isn't, you know, included in the kit, but they do always tie their kits together with some sort of, you know, twine or ribbon, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, so many kits do include a length of ribbon as part of their, their kit contents. So anyway... I'm going to do some heat embossing with this just to make sure that the sentiment stands out because these backgrounds are really pretty, but they're also really busy. And so in order for you to actually see it, it would be important to use something that's going to stand out a little bit more. Luckily, the sayings in the stamp set are quite prominent. So they like they're sorry, they're quite thick lined and therefore they are going to show up a little bit easier. But another reason that I chose to use heat embossing on this is because that backer sheet is not standard paper. As you can see, it's reflecting the light uh, from my lamps because it is a shiny paper. And therefore, not a lot of ink is going to stick to it. Usually, the only ink I'm successful with is like something like Stazon. I happen to only own Stazon in black. I don't own it in white. And so I wouldn't have been able to stamp it in any other color but black. Then you wouldn't have seen it. Now the white glitter embossing powder that I used here isn't exactly fine powder, so it's not as good as some other choices for sentiments, but again, because these are thick sentiments, it pretty much worked out. And it is white glitter embossing powder, and a lot of times I, you know, I mentioned that I avoid using glitter because of donating cards. 
The one organization that I donate a lot to is Cards for Hospitalized Kids. And if you read their guidelines, and I encourage you to read the guidelines of anyone that you're thinking of donating to because a lot of people will email me questions about donating their cards and I can't really answer because the answer is usually depends on where you donate. But they say that you can use glitter as long as it doesn't come off. So when you do something like glitter embossing powder, it doesn't come off. So therefore it's good to use. Anyway, next up, I wanted to start using the sprays. One of the really cool things about this kit are the sprays. That's like, you know, one of the things that really drew people to this kit. And I was, I had seen from others that the white spray from the kit actually sprays gold on black paper and then more of like a gold shimmery, I don't even know how to describe it, like kind of reminds me of like opals on white. So it gives you very different looks depending on what you spray it on. And then I wanted to spray some of the blue. And this is where I had a problem with the kit. The sprays don't really tell you how you're supposed to move the pigment around. So you don't usually just want to pick up a spray and spritz it if there is some pigment powder in it. There is a very particular way that you want to shake it and because if you shake too vigorously then it like the pigment powders can get stuck and so you're seeing that like my bottle is clogging and making a giant mess and I tried to like put it in a different bottle and so I could keep using it and then that didn't work and I was just getting like really frustrated with the blue spray and so I kind of had to like put it down for a week or two and um, come back to what I was trying to work on because I'd spent you know over an hour trying to unclog that bottle rinsing it out like I said putting in a new bottle all that so there are some directions out there about how to better shake spray bottles you really shouldn't be too vigorous with them and it would have been nice if Hero Arts had included those instructions I know that they kind of keep costs down by not printing labels on things like that however you know a quick like email uh sort of reminder or like even something in the kit description would have been great just because like you know I didn't know that I wasn't supposed to shake it that way I guess I should have as a more experienced crafter but you can't always assume everyone's going to be an experienced crafter so anyway that was kind of a bummer it discouraged me a bit from working with the kit for a while but I did get back to it and I finished some things up so I'm going to start with that black paper and I just think it's really pretty that gold spray however I will say the shimmer is coming off it's so these aren't cards that I'm necessarily going to be able to donate just because I don't want that shimmer coming off and causing um, health problems for people or for kids or whoever I'm donating to that um, they have, if you have something going on with their lungs, their breathing's troublesome, you wouldn't want that getting in, um, in there. So anyway, regardless, pretty background, decided to take advantage of that gorgeous dye that was included in this particular kit. That dye is by far my favorite part of the kit. I really do like the gold spray. I think that's really cool that, or the gold white mix whatever spray. I mean, I don't even know what to call it because it's so interesting. However, just because I'm a little bit more limited in how I use it, and I, I'm gonna say that the star dye frame thing is probably my favorite. I decided to stamp the sentiment, and then as you can see, I keep holding the frame over it so that I can see what it's going to look like and deciding do I want to add some more things and I generally recommend this strategy like a lot of times you know you have an idea in your head is that going to work you there's little things you can do to make to kind of try things out I mean in the end this is just cardstock so if it turned out that I didn't like it I could spritz it again and restamp all this stuff I'm not using up pieces of the kit which again is something that's pretty cool about the hero arts kits it you know there are a couple of handfuls or sorry a couple of sheets of paper so if you used up one of those sheets and you didn't like it you would kind of waste it but a lot of the cards if you messed up you could try again because it's sprays and stencils and stamps and all those things that are usable over and over and over again so I finally decided that I liked it with just the two strips of stars and I adhered the black cutout frame on top of it and I'm ready to move on to the white paper that I had spritzed with the white gold whatever it's called spray. <laughs> and um, I decided I would try to do some stamping along it 
And I put it in my Misty to try to get an idea of what it will look like. I thought the idea of the little girl flying with a trail. This kit reminds me kind of like of Peter Pan um, when at the beginning of the movie when he gives them all pixie dust and they fly away and it kind of has that vibe to me. And so I wanted to, you know, kind of recreate that by putting this little bit of star dust behind the girl kind of like she was flying with pixie dust like they do in the movie and then again use the let your light shine sentiment and I um, am going to stamp this with VersaFine jet black onyx or sorry onyx black not jet black onyx black ink and it's because I'm going to do some clear heat embossing over it like I want it to be more prominent because right there as I'm stamping it with black I had originally thought maybe I would just leave it black but when I stamped it with black, it started reacting with the spray and turning gold. And it made it a little bit, like it made it a little, I don't know how to describe it, but I basically felt like it needed a little bit more to it. It, um, I don't know, it just called for some shine or something to me. So I decided to then add the clear embossing powder over it. However, it was a little bit tricky because I'm not sure if I even used an embossing powder bag. So like the embossing powder was kind of sticking into places that I didn't really want it to. Um, and you also, if you're doing something like that, you really want to make sure the spray is completely dry. And so then I'm going to clear heat emboss this. But a couple tips on clear heat embossing because I'm going to do it a lot in this video. If you hold your paper off your uh, work surface, then it will heat a little bit more evenly because when you put your paper down on your work surface and then you heat it, there's nowhere for that heat that's passing through the paper to go and it sort of gets trapped underneath and causes more warping. So if you want less warping, hold your paper up so that the heat passes through. However, I have been told many times and it's been recommended that you get um, a heat embossing gun from Ranger because a, or sorry, no, the heat embossing gun is to, is for drying things. Whereas this, um, for the Wagner heat gun is what you're supposed to use to, um, to heat emboss things. But the other gun causes less warping. So if you're more patient, you can use that gun to heat emboss. I've been told and I've seen it happen at my local scrapbook store. So, you know, if you're getting a lot of warping, that might be a suggestion as well. For my next card, I am just taking a piece of thick white cardstock, probably Recollections 110 pound, and I'm putting some distress ink over it. This is distress oxide ink. And I wanted to create a sort of like night sky kind of pattern so I'm using wilted violet something denim I'm not sure the name of it right now I'm black soot uh, I believe it's a denim color there oh faded jeans jeans denim yeah um, so I'm going to blend those into each other I really prefer the distress oxide inks for something like this they just blend so much easier but as you can see when you want to get a lot of color down initially it can be helpful to put the stamp pad directly onto the paper rather than trying to um, get it all up with a foam blending tool. So I put that off to the side to dry and I'm creating another background just because I'm kind of like playing around here. This is my second go at the kit. This is after having put it away for a little bit and I originally had tried to um, do what I, I do a lot of the time and not really add a bunch of extra stuff to the kit. A lot of times I like to see what could I make with just the kit contents. I don't like to add a lot of extra inks just to kind of show um, the versatility of a kit. However, in this particular instance, I was frustrated and I was just trying to create more cards for you. So I said, well, if Finishing the video means that I have to add some extra stuff. I guess finishing the video is the better thing to do. And so rather than trying to create all kinds of backgrounds with those sprays, since I was having trouble with it, I, you know, gave up and moved on to Distress Ink. So I put some of the faded jeans and wilted violet randomly down on the background. And then I'm covering it with a, quite a bit of black soot because I'm trying to create a galaxy background. When I covered it with black soot, because it's pigment ink, it's layering on top of each other more than if you did this same technique with traditional distress inks. They don't really cover each other so much. They kind of blend together a bit more. So 
it is a little bit different of a technique. I feel you have to kind of go back and add more color with the Distress Oxides versus doing with regular Distress Inks. But I do have videos on my channel sharing how you can create a galaxy background with traditional Distress Inks if that's what you have. So now that I have like a whole bunch of Distress Color, of those three different Distress Colors on my cardstock, I wanted to go back to adding the Shimmer Spray. And I'm going to spritz some of it onto a block and use it from there. So now as I'm gonna use this shimmer spray, I'm going to shake it the right way and that's by moving it vigorously between your hands. So not actually shaking the bottle, but just sort of rolling the bottle. And you know, I did some research and they said that was more effective and I was like, I gotta try that because I got really frustrated over the blue ink or the blue spray and I didn't wanna ruin my white spray too, especially because the white spray is so pretty and unique. So try the rubbing thing if you're having trouble with sprays. And then I spritzed it all over that background. Um, later on, I decided that maybe the better thing would have to, to do would be to spritz it on a block. So here I'm gonna try that technique. I just felt like by spritzing it directly onto the paper, what happened is it just was like more blotchy, removed more color than I wanted. So then I spritzed it on a block and I rubbed it over that other piece of distress paper that I had created, that sort of um, fade away effect. And I think I like the second one better. They're definitely just different looks. You know, if you want a sort of um, messier background and remove some of it, you can certainly do the spray. However, because I was a little discouraged, I didn't really like it, I did smush it with a block. You could have dried it, see how it looked. Um, but again, at this point, I was kind of just trying to go with it. Now, that made there to be a lot of like extra color and shimmer on the block. So when I was rubbing it into the Distress Oxide ink, this spray was reactivating the ink, pulling it up a little bit, putting it on my block. So I said, we well, you know, why waste that ink? Why not try to create a third background all at the same time? Because here, basically, I'm creating a whole bunch of backgrounds because I'm trying to have enough to, you know, go through and finish this video. Now, there wasn't quite, I wasn't pulling off quite enough spray to fill a whole background. So then I started adding a bit more of the spray and moving it around on the piece of cardstock. And it moved some of the areas that were more concentrated of color and um, into the less concentrated areas. It also meant that any part that was left white at least had shimmer on it. So it looked better than if it was just plain white. So those three backgrounds. And then I must have not filmed something because there's a stencil on there. I, I used the stencil and it looks like with some distress ink, some of the black oxide ink there, and I pounced it through on top of that purple background. Sorry that that wasn't um, videoed there. As I said, this has been a while since I have recorded this and, um, you know, got that messed up there. But anyway, I am going to... Um, heat emboss a sentiment again I'm using heat embossing because it makes the sentiment more prominent on a busy background general tip yes using a really stark black ink helps a lot but clear embossing over it helps even more and just makes everything more prominent i'm also going to use the little girl stamp one of my favorite things about using versifying ink as my black ink over some other inks is it stamps pretty well the first time a lot of times when I'm using my Copic Safe inks, Memento, My Favorite Things, uh, whatever brand, I have a Simon Says Stamp one, they all just don't give as consistently good of an impression. I did um, another, th a similar sort of thing here where I also stamped with, uh, sorry, I also inked through the stencil. And again, I don't know why there is not any video of that, guys. Again, so sorry. But I did use the stencil that came in the kit to create that background. This one is the Distress Oxide ink right through the stencil. The impression left on the previous card was I Distress Oxide inked through the stencil. Then I spritzed it so that it would pick up some of the ink and I pressed it down like a stamp on that background. So you see that it gave two different looks. One was much lighter and it was the um, negative part of the stencil, the uh, part that is plastic. And then that one there, the second one, was um, the, um, the kind of true normal way of putting the stencil. I'm gonna work with my blue ink, uh, blue spray again. As I mentioned before, I put it in a new bottle and Eventually that did help. I kind of let it settle for a while. I shook it properly by, you know, um, 
rolling it between my fingers and I was able to get some of the spray out. I will say I don't think it's as shimmery once I transferred it into the new bottle, but it is what it is and I got a little bit more use out of it. Anyway, here what I'm deciding to do is rather than spritzing the background, because when I was spritzing it, I put it in a mini mister as you can see, like a ranger mini mister. It wasn't really giving that wide coverage spray that will allow you to cover a background. So I decided to instead spritz it onto a block and smush it onto the background. So it gave a similar effect of like, you know, covering a surface, but it worked with what I had left. However, I will say if you spritz it directly on, it would probably like pool up in areas and create a different look. It also might be lighter because it gave a finer spray in other areas, but I'm just kind of working with it as you can see. I'm also going to um, add some of the white spray in this way. Since I kind of experimented with adding the blue spray, I decided to um, try a similar thing with the white spray, I believe. Now, as you can see, this was a super messy card kit to work with. It um, is just like all, I think it's mostly just because of the sprays and that blue spray stains. I will let you know my fingers were blue for like several days afterwards. You gotta get one of those like lava stones or whatever to take it all off. Um, so after I kind of played with the idea of covering a background with the blue spray, I wanted to create a similar idea. So rather than just spritzing the white spray on, because I kind of did something similar, um, I wanted to see what it would be like if I activated the Distress Oxide ink with shimmer spray with that particular shimmer spray instead of water. So you could smush um, Distress ink onto the paper, spritz it with water, and do this smooshing thing. That's, you know, really cool, done it a bunch of times. But I thought it'd be more fun with the shimmer spray, kind of take advantage of uniqueness of this kit. I'm also using a block to help push it around. Now, here I am using regular cardstock. In retrospect, I might recommend using watercolor paper instead because I found that with the, the regular paper, you uh, or I was getting like areas that dried really fast and just soaked up into the paper and made it dark. Whereas with watercolor paper, I think it would soak up a little more slowly. Also, as I mentioned before, that blue is really prominent. So because my fingers weren't completely clean, as I moved on and was working on those purple backgrounds, I kept getting splotches, splotches of blue because it like the wet purple paper would reactivate the blue spray on my hand. So if you don't want that kind of thing, you'll definitely want to clean up in between. But I'm, you know, again, flowing with it, you know, and just making it work because I want to get 10 cards for you guys. So um, I might have worked with the blue splotches and pretended like I wanted them there. Or I mean, I don't not want them there, but you know what I mean. Um, and then I'm going to make a shaker card. So I'm going to take that pretty star frame cutout thing. Um, I wanted to make a shaker card just because there are sequins in the kit. So to me, if there's sequins in the kit, it means make a shaker card. And I like shaker cards. They're fun. I found a good way to make them more recently. Um, something that I always forget to do when I'm in, well, not always, because I'm going to do it right this time, I think, um, is you have to like finish decorating your card before you turn it into a shaker. Because a lot of times I get into shaker mode and I'm adding the phone tape and I'm, you know, like going along doing my thing. And then I'm like, oh, wait, I wanted to stamp a sentiment on the top of this. Or I wanted to stamp a sentiment on a card panel. And now it fully formed my shaker. And it's so much harder to stamp because, you know, if you want to stamp on any part that isn't perfectly covered with foam tape, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, making my shaker. I keep shakers simple. Very, very simple. I um, double layer the foam tape. Then I just generally create a rectangle. I don't try to curve around the shape. Not because it's even necessarily that hard, but it's just a little bit more time consuming. There's more potential to mess it up. Uh, it's harder to do with thin foam tape uh, versus wide foam tape. And there's foam tape out there that people swear by as being more flexible, but I like to keep it simple. I like to just have fun making my cards and rather than making like the most masterpiece perfect card, I'm like, generally this the rectangle is good enough it's still gonna look great it's still gonna shake and so I just kind of keep it simple and I go for it and then I just do a simple square shaker 
So I'll remove all that foam backing tape. And the one key that I have found with working with shakers, and I didn't do this the first couple times I worked with shakers. I um, frustrated myself more than I needed to. And I would always try to put the shaker material inside the shaker piece, like inside the top piece, and then put the card down on top of it. I don't know why I thought that made sense because that's so much harder. Instead, you want to put the shaker onto or the shaker material, the sequins onto your card base or whatever you're putting your shaker thing on top of and then line it up. Again, so obvious. I'm sure you all knew that, but um, for the longest time, I struggled with shakers for reasons like that. And anyway, when I also, also want to make shakers, I tend to be pretty generous with my sequins because I think that it looks more fun. And I've also found that I could dump half a bag of sequins into every shaker card I make and never run out of sequins. And then if I did, I could buy more sequins and I'd be happy to because I love sequins. So I'm just going to be generous and really enjoy it. So here I am forgetting that I wanted to stamp a sentiment on the front of my shaker card. I told you I'd do it. <laughs> there I go. Like I didn't, I don't even remember what happened in this video. I just remember that I'm going to forget something like that because I always do. Anyway, generally it works out. And I again recommend the VersaFine because it's a stickier ink. It's a better quality ink and you're better you're more likely to get a good impression stamping with it. So if you're in a precarious stamping situation, I'd go for it. But also what I like to do when I mess that up is I tend to add a banner with the sentiment as opposed to simply just stamping the sentiment because I'm afraid I'll mess it up. So here for these cards, I had um, done the gold embossing on them earlier. You may have remembered that because I apparently did not piece my video together very well. And... I felt like they needed a little something else. So I went back and took the fancy patterned paper from the kit and I added some strips of the white glittery fancy stuff onto the top of both of these cards. So these were the ones that I created with the stencil, one by pushing the ink through the stencil and the one by um, wetting the stencil with all the ink still left on it and pushing my paper onto the inked stencil. Next up, I'm going to make another shaker card because like, why not? Apparently, I'm in a shaker mood. But actually, one of the reasons I did it was um, besides the fact that shaker cards are totally fun and there was like a ton of sequins in this kit. Another good thing, like I did get frustrated by this kit, but I also think Hero Arts is an incredible value for the price of their kits. Um, there is a star die and I wanted to make use of the star die. I wanted to show you something besides just cutting out the star element. And as you can see there, there is a ton more of the sequin mix, even though, like I said, I'm pretty generous with it. And I added a bunch, I thought, to that first card. I still have a ton left. So I'm going to make another shaker card. Now, when I was working with it, I decided that I would cut out the stars for the one shaker card and I'd also because I wanted some purple stars and I wanted some blue stars. So the reason that I wanted um, the I wanted to kind of reuse elements. So if I'm going to cut out the purples to make a shaker card to make windows for a shaker card, I may as well reuse them in a different card. And so I decided to do an inlaid die cut on this blue piece of paper that I created earlier by smushing the spray from the block. And that meant that I also then had some extra blue stars. So now after creating these two cards, I have some blue stars and some purple stars, which are fun to use for other things. And so like when I sometimes when I'm making with a card kit, I create one card and the scraps, quote unquote scraps, from that first card become the inspiration for a second card. So now I have those purple and blue stars that will then inspire a third card, hopefully, if I remember correctly. <laughs> so I've done the inlaid die cutting where I've laid the purple stars into the spots where the blue stars were left behind. Again, just going to... Um, use some white heat embossing for the sentiment here and um, you want to add a generous amount of embossing um, powder bag whatever you call that that EK success powder bag that makes things not stick you want to be generous with that especially when you're using wet medium on your card like sprays um, because they just tend to have more static to them. You can also see that black piece of cardstock was like a total 
wasted piece that um, I uh, like I spritzed on it. I didn't like how it looked. That didn't mean I had to throw it out. You can just turn it over, use the other side. You don't have to, you know, you just toss it if you need to. But just I thought I'd mention that um, sometimes, especially when working with a kit and I just have all those papers laying around. I'm just like, yeah, you know, that's still good. And I uh, snatch it up. So here I'm going to complete that shaker from before. I showed it to you initially because I wanted you to know where I got those purple stars that I was working with, but here I'm ready to finish the shaker. And I was going to put it over a piece of white cardstock, but then I was like, uh, I don't know, it's kind of boring to just go over white cardstock. So what if I add the shimmer to the card base? So I don't want it to be everywhere all over the card base. I don't want to spritz it down because then, you know, it'll get everywhere on the card, on the sides and all that. So to make it a little bit more controlled, I again did the smushing block thing. You know, sometimes you get into a technique like that and you just use it 17 times in a row. At least that's what happens to me. I'm like, oh, that's fun. And then I, how can I do it six other ways? And um, some people could consider that getting into a rut, but I think it's cool. Anyway. Um, which I've also said a million times. I'm sorry this is very rambly, guys, but I just wanted to share because I know people enjoy these videos and I hope that it gives you some fun ideas, even if you don't have the kit. A lot of these cards um, could be created with, you know, similar supplies. I'm not using the um, like this shaker card. You have a star die, boom, you've got it, you know, um, or some shimmer sprays and distress inks and whatever. Again, adding a very generous or what I felt was a very generous amount of sequins. However, I still have a bunch of them left. It's a very pretty sequin mix to all the purples and stuff. And I, again, just created a rectangle. I didn't have to push my foam tape all around those little stars. I just made a big rectangle and it still looks like a really fun shaker card. If you did go around all those stars, it would give a different look. It could be really cool. I'm not trying to knock it. I guess I'm just lazy and didn't want to do it. So there it is. And I think, I feel like at this point I must have made 10 cards, but I guess I haven't. So here we are. Either that or I'm trying to use up these star scraps or these scraps of this white paper that I still have. Um, so I thought that the um, white, it's not really white, white paper because it's see-through. This like, it's this white fabric glitter coolness that came in the card kit. I thought that because it has this see-through element, it would be fun to use with one of these backgrounds that I have created. And once I started going with those three colors of Distress Ink, I was like, these are the colors of the kit. Because actually, if you go back to the beginning and you look at the colors that were in that backer sheet, these are kind of those colors. And I'm happy that I added Distress Oxide Ink to this kit. I know that it's extra supplies and not everyone has them, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it doesn't quite show you what you could do with just the kit, but it made me happier and made me actually enjoy working with this kit, which initially, like I said, I was having a little bit of trouble with. And so I, again, put the shimmer spray on the block, shock, because I've done it seven times already, and um, smushed it onto the paper to add a finer, more even coverage of the spray. I found that the spray bottles that Hero Arts provided did not provide a mist. It provided a very clear like squirt down and I didn't want to squirt. I wanted more of a mist kind of like, um, I don't know what brand they're from, but like, uh, oh, the Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist Spray comes out very much like all over the place um, rather than a concentrated stream or even the um, Ranger's Perfect Pearl Mists give better um, all over sort of spray, not a concentrated like jet stream of spray. So then I was able to attach that um, piece of white fabric-y paper coolness. And um, I wanted to use up those stars that I created. So I thought, well, they're the perfect embellishment to go with this kit. So I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive and tack those down. Now you might see the adhesive through that um, white fabric-y paper. And so these star embellishments are a way of covering that up. You could just put a bit of adhesive behind each of the stars rather than covering the background with it. And then you won't worry, have to worry about seeing the adhesive. You'll, you know, just cover it up with all these. And I was at first trying to use my ATG gun to put down these stars because it is 
such a strong adhesive, but on little things it can get kind of cumbersome. And so I'm going to switch over to my multimedia mat from Ranger. I've been very happy with it. I have plenty of it. No need to switch over to the latest fab glue, you know, when the glue that I have at home already works. So I'm going to use it. But anyway, um, add a little adhesive to that, add it to a white card base. Uh, Hero doesn't come with cardstock kit. They, their kits don't come with cardstock. That's fine by me. I can buy plenty of cheap bulk cardstock. So here are my cards. Um, there are uh, quite a few designs there. There will be a coordinating blog post where I'll show like individual cards and maybe include some measurements and things like that. Um, thank you so much for watching and sticking through my rambling and I hope that there was something enjoyable about this video and that hopefully it's given you some ideas and inspirations. Sorry for the less than perfect videoing skills this time and voiceover skills for that matter. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I do feature quite a few of the Hero Arts kits. I do a lot of 10 cards, one kits video. So if you're big into kits, you should enjoy my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day. And um, there's no links in the video description because this kit is sold out. So sorry about that. But if you are interested in purchasing the stamp set, please send me an email because I think that I probably will sell mine. So if you'd like the stamp set, let me know. Have an awesome day. Bye.